just wish he knew. Welcome back to the channel. So another video, this one's gonna be a bit different. It's gonna be a demersal jigging how-to. I'm gonna explain basically, show the fish that I've been catching lately and run through step-by-step step how I've been catching them. The rods, the reels, the gear, the leader, the line, the lure, and, and also the technique. Basically the doing behind this video is getting heaps of guys messaging me and asking how do you do this, how do you do that? You know, they're going up mackerel islands, they're going up Exmouth, and they ain't catching shit. So um, we've been going up and, and we've been getting a few nibs, put it that way. So I thought now maybe is the time to run through what I've been using and, and how I've been catching the fish. Um, so if you already know it all about jigging and fishing, then probably move on, maybe not the video for you. But if you're struggling and you want to learn a bit, of, a bit or two about, even if you take a little bit out of what I'm telling, um, maybe it might be worth it for you. So. Uh, sit back, relax, uh, gonna be a few yarns, so strap in. So let's go, eh? So I'm gonna roll on the first clip of the coral trout I got on my light setup. So this was using the Nomad, Nomad Vibe, absolute killer lure that we've been starting to use. Uh, old Rex Hunt, he got me onto him, Podgy. The greatest oh, lure no. ever designed. <laughs> Thank you, Nomad. Um, so it, they're killer for up north, but they'll also work in Perth. The Jewies and that love them. They are a little bit harder to use than your average jig, and I'll explain probably why. But let's roll on the footage of the coral trout, and uh, let's have a yarn about it. No, but he's just lit up. Oh, I had him halfway up. Bite to him. Oh, he's just plugging there. Don't want to up the drag too much because it's too late in the fight. Might need a gaff on this one, bro. I think it's a good trout. A really good trout. Fat trout on the Nomad Vibe. He is a ripper. Fishing in 28 meters, we've just shifted it up, new mark. And I was using the Vex jig for a while, no bites. Skipped it up, Nomad Vibe. Absolute killer, man. Nomad vibe. These things, are, these things are deadly. Deadly as they say. I'll get one out of the box for you. He's already out. So they already come rigged with good hooks. They're ready to go. So in the video, you'll basically see how I'm fishing with it. I'm, I'm, I'm driving along, I'm mapping out the ground. I know exactly where the fish are on my sounder. I know where the fish are. Then I basically drift over them and I'm casting this up drift. Cast it up drift, we're in 28 meters. Cast it up drift, and by the time I get to the spot, it's on the bottom. So by the time I get on top of the fish, the jig's basically vertical. If you get this jig vertical in front of their nose, you're getting a nib. But if, if it's on that 45, it's just not quite as good. It doesn't get the best action. So basically, you just gotta know when to use these. Like if, it's, if there's a lot of current and a lot of wind, they can be hard, because they're, they're not that heavy. They're probably, I think about 110 grams or something like that. Might say on there. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure actually. Oh yeah, 105 grams. It was pretty close. Five grams out, let me off, eh? But yeah, so 105 grams. It's not the heaviest of, of jigs. Um, so they can be a little, bit, a little bit difficult to use. But yeah, if you just use that method of casting up drift, and, and waiting, uh, timing it right, you need to know how to time it. And, and if you get that jig vertical, man, bang, you are on. So yeah, a bit of a crack of fish on that one, coral trout, that's definitely one to remember. So basically, this is my, my light setup, Saltiga BJ4, BJ4000. So this is spooled up with 40 pound, um, and I use a Saltiga X rod. I'll just show you that. Now it is quite light. I'm not sure if you can sort of see the specs on that. But uh, as you can see in the video, it is, it is a light rod, but it's got a bit of power. 
So well, I'm gonna put that, let's chuck that over there for now. It'll come back later. So that spooled up with 40 and I would normally run probably a Varavas leader, about 60 pound. Um, maybe someone would step up to 80, but, but 60 is pretty good. So this setup is great for your light gear. I'm using for your light, lighter jigs, like you know, your 100 grams, once you get up that 150, probably not as good. In, in Perth, it's my go-to. Perth Dewey fishing, I'll fish this reel all day long because we don't have that shark problem. But once you start going up north, I find it, it just doesn't have, it doesn't have the balls to, to get the fish away from the shark. Like sometimes you're fishing, that, that, the fish is in the shark's mouth and you gotta, you gotta wrangle it out, man, bang it out. And, and you just take that heavier gear. When I'm, I'm using this, I find that I do get busted off quite a lot and I can't put the pressure that I want on those fish to get away from the sharks. But I still will use it. Um, it's obviously a lot funner using light gear. And, and you can get a good action on the jig, like those Nomad Vibes, using this lighter gear, you can get a good action on it. So I'm probably using that fishing up to, probably 30 meters would be the tops. When I start getting 40 meters, I, I, I bump up to that heavier gear, because uh, it's just a longer fight. You're fighting that fish for longer. Yeah, you, need, you need a bit of power sometimes. But yeah, 10, 15 meters, definitely worth it. Um, but yeah, when there's a lot of sharks around and shit's getting a bit hectic, I bump up to my heavier setup and I'll run through my heavier setup in a sec. But my heavier setup, that is actually my go-to. If I want to produce fish, bang, I'm going the heavy setup. I'm not dicking around with light gear, but I still will use it. So let's put that aside there. Let's move on to, um, to my heavier setup and the heavier jigs, which is, which is basically what I would be 99% of the time, it's what I'm using. So let's roll on the clip of another coral trout on the Vex Dewdrop, one of my go-to lures. Let's grab one out. There's one in the packet. That's a 130, 130 Dewdrop. They are my go-to lure, man. Like that, that is the go-to, I'm telling you. Yeah, here we go. Big fish. Oh, oh, he's getting sharked. Go, 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 go. Oh. Oh. Yep. Big trout. Oh, he's gone ballistic under the boat. That's why I came here. Big coral trout. Big coral. Trout. 130 gram Vex jig, I've ran you through before. Yeah, the bloody boys. So um, let's, oh, there's one out of the packet. That's the actual color that I got the trout on. It is, as all good things, probably discontinued now. That's a 160 gram, but yeah. Um, when I'm fishing in these, uh, in these waters for coral trout, and like, you know, 20, 30 meters, I'm not afraid to use a big jig. Like that's, that's a 200. If, if it's windy, I'll, I'll use a 250. I'll step it up 250, no worries. So I'll run through my go-to rod and reel setup. Shimano Torsa, Torsa 30, I think it is. Tor yeah, Shimano Torsa 30 with a Masami rod. I'm not sure what the P rating on that rod is, but it's quite, it's quite steep. You can see in the, in the videos, it's got some backbone in it. It's got some balls. Um, this would be my go-to heavy setup. It's spooled up with 65 pound braid. Um, and leader wise, I'm always using about, I'm using hundred pound minimum, more like 130. Bang, you know, Taylor Marine leader. Um, if I want to get fancy, you know, sometimes I get fancy, let's go. I'll get the Saltiga 130 out, but if I'm getting shark, I'm getting heckers all bloody day. Mate, I'm using Taylor Marine leader because it's cheap. You go, go get a price on that and the price on the Saltiga leader, go do a few trips up north and tell me which one you think you're gonna use. But uh, a Taylor Marine leader, it hasn't let me down yet. So that is my go-to setup. Now, one thing I'll also say is like, man, I go through so many rods and reels. Like, I, I'm, I'm always buying reels. They're always breaking, I'm always getting them serviced, I'm getting them fixed, this breaks, that breaks. All your Saltigas, mate, you can say how strong they are, but if you thrash them, you'll break parts on them. But this Shimano Torsa, 
Man, I've used this thing for like more than 10 years and I've only had it serviced a few times and mate, it's never actually let me down. It's never broken apart. It has never once let me down compared to all my other reels. Like I've got dog fights, all that jazz and uh, like they're not bulletproof, like they break, they break a lot. Um, but this Shimano Torso and, and the other reels, what gives me the shits is the other reels I actually look after. This thing I absolutely thrash. I have very little respect for it, um, but it's my go-to reel and it just never breaks. It never, it's never once let me down. So yeah, that is the bloody go-to Shimano Torsa. Let's go. So that is basically the exact jig I'm using. Now, um, a lot of these days, all these VEX jigs, they come fully rigged, so that's great. But what you will find is, um, so oh, oh, I guess I'll better say this too. Get this out of the pack. So that's the VEX 200. That's as it comes out of the box. What I'll do is I'll just whack a swivel onto that split ring there and I'm good to go. I never just tie it straight on. Don't tie it straight on. But so nowadays they come all fully rigged, but when they didn't, this is basically how I do it. I'd be using these ball bearing assist ring swivels. Get a shot of that for you. So to rig it up, Get one out of the pack. So yeah, it's great that it comes fully rigged, but the chances are really quickly a shark's gonna grab hold and, and you're gonna lose it. Or Spanish mackerel. There's always Spanish mackerel up there, you're getting snipped. So I also buy these bulk packs of vexed assists. Um, probably, oh, let's have a look at what I've got, but I'm always just running this pink color. So if I'm buying a whole shitload, you'll probably see they're all pink. One's orange. Basically the pink gets the bite nine times out of 10. So let's rip that out. That can go in bin. So let's rig one up for you. So the idea behind this is that there's no, there's no split ring so there is a split ring on there, but you're, you're not attached to the split ring at all. You attach your hooks to this solid ring. Easier said than done. Oh, God. Rocket science. Okay, so that's on. And then we use the split ring Use the split ring to the top of the lure. Oh, more rocket science. Rocket science. So now, when the fish bites, obviously this bit, we're not attached to any split ring. Only the, only the lure is attached to the split ring. But yeah, dew drop in that color, man gets the bloody bite. But yeah, I think it's discontinued, so you can't get it anyway. But it's good to have a good yarn about it, isn't it? So that is a go-to jig. Jigs, you probably notice up north, I'm, I'm using quite a fast style of jig. Like, I'm, I'm not really slow jigging it. I'm dropping down and I'm, oh, hook myself. I'm giving it these ones here, like, I'm, I'm going fast. You can, you can see it in the videos. I'm doing a fast style jigging. Now, I guess one downside to that is it does bring in the sharks. You do get hit by sharks and other Spanish mackerel, but I find that that fast jigging, man, it gets the bloody bite. So, so I do, and I mix it up. Like, you, you know, you got a bit of slow jigging, bit of fast jigging, and you're seeing what works, you know? So I'll run on to another one of Vex jigs, is the Jew Slow. Uh, let's roll on some clips of a, of a Rankin route in the 40s. Um, just a patch that I randomly, I was going out to another mark and uh, found a patch of ground and man, the rank and cod there were bloody on. Dropping back down again. Woo! It's going to be on, baby, I can tell. Might head in soon, it's probably my last drift, I reckon. Oh, Jesus! Yeah, okay, rightio, cobber! 
Yeah, yep, yep. Here we go. Big fish. Bang, bang, bang. Baby. Oh. Oh no, war. Another big dog ranking cod. Do slow. 42 meters. This is, uh, I'm bagging out here. Woo! It's not, at the start I'm thinking, well this jig's probably not my style of jigging because I'll let, I'll get one out of the pack. That, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the actual jig I was using. So it's got the Oki, he Oki head on it. And uh, I get a closer look at that. Yeah, they are an absolute killer jig, man. So then they're probably a slower style jig, hence the name Juice Slow. But when I was dropping these down, they basically, I wasn't even getting to twitch the jig. Like it's floating down. And as soon as it gets to the bottom, the cod's there, bang, and the rankings are on, man. They're like biting it straight away. Probably a bit more of a slow style jigging with this. Oh, oh, oh shit. Yep. Oh, geez. That is a big fish. Didn't even hit the bottom. Oh, oh, and we're off. That was a big, oh shit. Oh yep, on again. Mate, I didn't even twitch that thing. As soon as that thing hit the bottom, bang, bang, bang. Zing, 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 zing. So that's another style of jig. Um, that I have added many to my collection and I'll be using those a lot more. Um, yeah, as I say at the start, thought it wasn't really my style of jig, but man, they get the bloody bite. Another thing is I'm always mapping out the area. Like I'm not just, I, I, I map it out on the, on the sound, I sound up the fish, I know where they are, I mark it on the GPS and I'm lining up that drift and I'm waiting to drop the jig down at the right time. I'm not dropping the jig down 100 meters just hoping for the best like, and, and waiting to get to that, that point. I'm, I'm holding the, the jig in the boat until I know I'm about to get onto those fish. I'm dropping down and more often than not, I'm looking at the Furuno and I can see the jig landing bang straight on top of the fish. And that's just basically timing. Like you're not wasting your time off the mark, dicking around like, get the jig on top of the fish and you'll get the bite you know that's uh you know it's not rocket science or rocket surgery whatever you want to call it i'm gonna roll on this clip of this quality red emperor coming up so you can see this fish it's in about 25 meters of water absolute cracker to the shallows 25 meters jig head and bait oh pump stick mode engaged yeah yeah no, it's red, red. Right. yeah boy Big dog red, 25 meters, yeah baby. Talk shit, get bit. And you can see I'm just on my heavy setup. So I'm on my torso, on the torso, on the heavy setup and uh, not giving it much. Now this was caught on the Big John's jig uh, and that would have been a three ounce, three ounce jig head and that's just a fresh fillet of Spangled Emperor. One of my favorite styles of fishing is just cruising over that like 10 to 20 meter mark looking for ground, looking for fish. You're doing a lot of moving around because there is a lot of shit fish around as well, right? There's a lot of little spangled emperor in that, but that's where you get your big coral trout, you get your big rankins. And if I want to produce fish, like my number one way is dirty bait fishing. But when you're fishing in the shallows, you, you don't use Paternoster rigs. They don't get the bite. The best method for me is a single jig head with bait. So that's a three ounce jig head. That's a big John's jig. If it's, um, if it's a little bit windier, a bit of more current, I'll up it to the six. But yeah, basically with this style of fishing, like, yeah, I'm trying to use as light a jig as I can. And for bait, it's always fresh bait. Like whatever you're catching there, you're catching Spangled Emperor, whatever fish you're catching, you're filleting up and you're using that fillet, fresh bait. Um, I don't bring store bait, bought bait at all. Like maybe, maybe some good squid in that, but yeah, more often than not, you're not getting bit on it. You're getting bit on that fresh fish. They're feeding on that fresh fish down there. So that style of fishing would be like my go-to. And I'm always using my heavy setup, 80 pound torso. Um, that is like, my, if I want to produce fish, that's my go-to. Um, so that's one way, single jig head. Another way, which we've just started using, which is, which is really good, is the, uh, well, I'll show you that one. It's the Big John's. Swing head. So how I rig that up, 
get out of the packet. Jeez, more rocket science. Get out of the packet. All right, so what I'm doing with that is I'm rigging it up with two Taiwan hooks. So I think I've spoke about these hooks before. These are like, these things should be illegal, man. They should be bloody illegal because they are absolutely deadly on the fish. That's the only hook you'll see me using out there. Must have, oh, oh, on, on bait, you know, obviously I use different hooks for jigging, but on bait, mustard Taiwana, it's a go-to. So what I'll do is I'll rig up heaps of these, right? about yo long, so about 30 centimetres, a snell, and I'll tie it straight on to the back of that swing head, all right? Best thing about this is when you get sharked, because you're gonna get sharked, there's hundreds of sharks there, is they basically, they just take those hooks off, man. So you actually, you're able to keep your swing head, and they just bite the hook and snap you off. So, so you basically, you lose your fish, that's gone, you got your swing head still, you got your tackle box with a thousand of these tied and you just basically tie another one on and you're good to go, like move on. Um, Cause that's the next thing as well. Like when you go to these shallow water spots, you're only really getting a few, you're getting a few goes at it. Drift over some good fish, like they're gonna bite straight away. You don't have time to dick around rigging up. You, when the fish are on, you need to be just bang, 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 like getting in and catching them. Cause uh, they will, they'll move on once, once, it's, once it's done, it's done, you know? So that's a good method to, to work fast and get down there and get the bite. Yeah, he's nice, he's on a Big Johnny's Custom. Two Taiwana hooks. But um, yeah, they're both, both basically very similar. Very similar, whether you want to use the swing head or the, uh, or the jig head by itself. And I mean, I don't really fish that much soft plastics, but yeah, put a soft plastic on it as well. Try your luck. I guess it comes to bottom meats, mate. I bloody love them. But uh, they do have their time and place. I don't really use these that much up north, but I will use them in Perth. So Perth Dewey fishing, man, these are like my go-to. I just buy two and 300 grams. They're all 300s. What's that? Yeah, it's a 300 as well. That's a 200. So they're basically my go-to for 40, 60, 80 meters. 40 meters, obviously I'm using those lighter ones. But yeah, once I start getting to the 80 meter mark, I'm using the 300s. So basically the reason why I don't use them up north is I find I get sharked on them a lot. So the shark will take the whole, I mean, they get the bite. They get the bloody bite, don't get me wrong. But they get sharked quite a bit. So you be fishing, you get sharked and you lose the whole rig and then you're out of action or you'll stay connected to it because it's got this assist cord, like you'll stay connected to the shark for so long. So that's basically why I don't use them up north and I'll, and I'll opt to use the swing head, um, basically just for quick rigging, like bang on that. I get sharked, I lose the, I lose the, I lose the hooks and I just move on and re-rig. Whereas that, uh, I'll either stay connected to the shark or the shark will just take the whole lot and now I have to re-rig the whole thing again. Um, and I've lost that head, you know? So like, I've got to think value for money when I'm fishing up there like so much, like uh, you have to kind of be smart and, and fish value for money, not just like what's the coolest jig, you know? But, um, but Perth, like Perth fishing, like I'll roll on a fish that we've got on these recently. Be a bit pink actually. Oh, yeah. She's giving you a bit of run. That's a ball terror, eh? Yeah, the bloody boys. All right, cracker on the bottom, mate. In 35 meters, 36. Um, Perth fishing and down south, when I'm chasing jewfish, snapper, man, they are the go-to. I would use those over anything else. I love jigging, but sometimes you just can't jig. Sometimes the, the fish aren't biting the jig and you gotta revert to being a dirty baito. Now, if I'm fishing shallow, like 40 meters, the Vex bottom meat, if I want to get savage, I'll be dropping those down. But yeah, I do find they get sharked. Um, so sometimes I'm a bit wary with them. Um, going deeper than that, bang, 300. Yep, let's go. But yeah, my go-to would probably be the Big John swing head. That's, so you can get those in an eight ounce. So up to about 40 meters, once again, good cons low wind, no current, 40 meters. Yeah, I'll use those, no worries. 
But when I start working in the like 80 meter range, you know, um, I guess all the cool kids aren't using these anymore, but I will use a Paternoster, you know? I know like, you know, one thing people have got to talk about, you remember back in the day, when you put like, when you got a jig head and you put bait on it, you, you're a loser, mate. But these days, if you got a lure and you're not using bait on it, you're a nobody, you know? It's just like how the times change. So sometimes I can't quite get my head around that. Like nowadays, you gotta put bait on your jig to, to fit in with the crew. But anyway, that's not here or there. So if I'm, if I'm fishing out in 80, um, 80, 90, 100, 120, 150, anything over that 80 meter mark, I will resort back to the old Paternoster. And let's see if this comes out untangled. Oh, it has. How good is that? More often than not, I pull these out and they really get tangled. So that is how I rig, I'll put my foot on the bottom of it. That's on the dropper. So you can see how big it is. Look, I'm not the tallest bloke, mate. I'm not bloody seven foot. And I'm definitely not even six foot. I'm like five something. So that's about um, how, how long I make it. What is that like? Oh, probably just shy of two meters. Um, and you know them hooks I'm gonna be using. You know it. Mustard Taiwana, will not use anything else. Um, just some Harbour dropper swivels. Taylor Marine, 130 pound leader. I use that for everything. Definitely I use it for rigs because it's cheap. Yeah, I don't use them a lot, but yeah, if I wanna produce fish and I'm out in the 80s um, and you got current, you got wind, there's no point dick around with jigs sometimes. There's no point dick around with these bottom meets and all that. Just, I just go back to what works. And that is sometimes a Paternoster rig. So, yeah. See me wearing this new Emission Doing It For The Cause shirt. Um, you can get yours, I'll drop the link below in the description so you can go and get your own. But uh, absolute killer design, man. Get them while they're hot. 100% of the proceeds of this is going to fighting the new proposed demersal ban and uh, basically fighting for alternate measures to the demersal ban. So 100% of the proceeds are going to that. And uh, mate, you're bloody, you, you're doing it for the cause, man. So buy a few, buy heaps, let's go. That basically wraps it up. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're liking what you see. And if you are, make sure you hit that like button. It's gonna help the videos out heaps. But uh, if you've got any questions, queries about any of the gear that I've run through, how I'm doing anything, just drop a comment below and I'll see if I can answer it or maybe make another video about it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.